Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Beth Ann. Um, today I am doing two tags. So I was recently tagged in the B tag by Jim's Books, Reading, and Stuff, but he is bringing us a whole new alphabet tag. I think he's the creator of the A to Z tag that went around a little while ago and which I still need to do actually. But anyway, he is now doing um, each letter individually. So today I'm going to do the A tag and then the B tag that I was tagged in. Um, and I really like these tags because they're a nice mix of um, some questions that are like, pick a book off your shelf to fill a prompt, but also sort of delving into the books a bit more as you'll, you'll see, like what's your favorite character arc, you know, things like that. Um, and then also a couple that are sort of get to know your booktuber better. Um, so I really like uh, the mix of prompts in these. So without further ado, the prompts will be down below. I'll try to put timestamps down there as well. Um, so first, the A tag. Um, so prompt number one, A is for America. What do you consider the great American novel? Um, <laughs> what is the great, what is an American novel? I mean, especially at this point in the 21st century, it's like, there's so much you have to encapsulate in that because we're such a diverse country. Um, and uh, even though we don't have a very long history uh, as the US of A. Um, anyway, so the first book that came to mind, this is a bit satirical. This is a very negative take, just to throw that out there. I do, there's a lot that I like about my country. <laughs> there's a lot that I like about being American. Uh, but my first thought was negative, And that was Gone with the Wind. <laughs> which is a book that I love. Let's also throw that out there. I've been rereading it over and over since childhood. I, I do love it. I do think it's beautifully written, but here are all the ways in which it is American. It is incredibly racist. It includes a lot of rewriting of history, the glorification of slavery and the Confederacy. Uh, it sort of idolizes selfishness. Um, it idolizes capitalism. Um, there's a romanticism of rural and agricultural communities, which like nothing against those communities, but we do have a problem uh, a little bit with sort of the romanticization of um, parts of that. Um, the actual romance in the book is sort of icky, even though I love it. Um, so anyway, Gone with the Wind, all of those things are very American. As I said, that's a bit of a negative satirical take. Um, uh, on the American novel. So I hope I didn't just offend anybody out, right out of the gate with the first prompt. Okay, number two, A is for arc. Which character in literature has the most interesting character arc? So I have no idea about the most interesting, but somebody immediately came to mind from a book I recently finished, which was The Count of Monte Cristo. And um, one character I really ended up liking was Albert de Morcerf, Morcerf, Mor Morcerf I, I'm sorry, um, Albert. And I think a lot of people really don't like Albert, but I actually kind of like him. And, and because he really developed as a person in the course of the novel. And he's a, he's a side character. He's a secondary character. So there's a lot that we don't see, but we first are introduced to him as kind of a dude bro. Like he's in Rome trying to get the ladies and is like offended because he's not getting enough action. And then he's trying to duel everybody for a while and getting offended by everything. Um, but at his heart, he's a really good guy. Like he really cares for his family. He really loves his mom. And by the end of the book, he's sort of really embraced a um, much more simple life. He's dedicated to his mom. He's dedicated to just kind of turning things around, getting a job essentially, and sort of rebuilding himself from the ground up after his like wealth and name has disappeared. Um, so I really liked that character arc. Okay, and then not a prompt, but Jim has a uh, beagle named Abby. So um, some people had asked for more footage of Abby, which starts with an A, so he included that. Um, I don't have a dog, but one of my daughter's names <laughs> starts with an A. So I am including a freebie photo of my daughter from a recent camping trip reading a book with her dad. Um, I don't put my daughter on the internet very much, so she's wearing a mask <laughs> in this photo, but um, I hope this is cute for some people. Prompt number three, A is for Australia. What was the last book you read by an Australian author? That would be Cocaine Blues by Carrie Greenwood, the first book in the Franny Fisher series. I have read, or I have watched and loved the TV series, so that was my first um, 
attempt at reading the books and I really loved it. It was very enjoyable. Um, prompt number four, A is for Austin. What do you plan to read for Jane Austen July? I am planning to read Mansfield Mansfield Park, which is the choice for the Down Memory Jane reading group, which is reading all six of Jane Austen's main novels this year and uh, every other month um, pairing a modern retelling of the Jane Austen novel in the month following the Jane Austen novel. So um, July is Mansfield Park, so I'll be reading that. Number five, A is for automobile. What is your favorite literary automobile? I don't really pay attention to literary automobiles. Um, so the one that came to mind was Mr. Weasley's car from Harry Potter uh, because it is anthropomorphized and has special powers due to magic. Um, so going back to my childhood for that one. Um, do not like J.K. Rowling's stances. Recently I'm saying, I'm gonna say that every time I mention her. Um, okay, number six, A is for anonymous. What is your favorite book or poem published anonymously? So I'm not sure that I've ever read a book or poem published anonymously, at least according to Goodreads, I haven't. Um, so I was not able to come up with something for this. Prompt number seven, A is for autobiography. What was the last autobiography you read? That would be The Home Place, Memoirs of a Colored Man's Love Affair with Nature by J. Drew Lanham, which I read in February as part of the Book Naturalists Book Club, organized by Heidi over at My Reading Life and Doris at Aldi Books. Um, and that was fantastic. So Drew Lanham is um, an academic, a scientific researcher. He's a professor at Clemson University. He is a world-renowned birder and ornithologist, and this was uh, his memoir of um, growing up and his connection to land and nature and how that's shaped his career, and it was a lovely read. Okay, prompt number eight, A is for audiobooks. Do you consider listening to an audiobook as reading? Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> no discussion needed. Um, okay, and that's it for the A tag. So moving on to the B tag. Jim, if you're, if you're watching this, I'm very disappointed because you didn't include bees or butterflies or birds even, which I need to mention because I'm married to an ornithologist, but we all know bees and butterflies are cooler than birds on my booktube channel. Cool. Um, so I'm going to put up a couple pictures. So here is a gorgeous butterfly um, from Montana and um, here's a bumblebee. The paint markings on the bumblebee are, I was doing, uh, I was trying out a research project um, that I didn't end up following through on, um, but it was very fun to paint little dots on bumblebees for a week or so. Um, and then another uh, gratuitous extra bee here. Okay, now that I've gotten that out of my system, we can go with the prompts. So number one, B is for Bildungsroman. Do you have a favorite Bildungsroman or coming of age story? So of course there are millions of options for this, um, but the ones that I've been enjoying recently are Sean and McGuire's Wayward Children series, which is a young adult series. The first book in it is Every Heart a Doorway, and it is about children that for whatever reason, um, feel like misfits in their lives and are often not uh, supported as well as they could be by their families and communities. Um, and uh, it's sort of a, it's a portal world fantasy. Um, so they all actually end up going into other fantasy worlds where they have another identity that fits them uh, the best, sort of their true identity. And so they sort of come into themselves in these portal worlds. They, they learn about themselves, they usually learn about friendship and teamwork and all kinds of things, um, gain self-confidence and tools, um, and then are eventually, because it's a portal, portal works both, both ways, are returned to um, the real world, sort of with all, everything that they've gained. Um, so I really love that series. Um, okay, prompt two, B is for beach. Be careful how you pronounce it. What would you recommend, oh, Jim's words, what would you recommend for a beach read? Um, so for me, it would be really just anything romance. So um, on the one hand, I can like something just like totally uh, lighthearted and enjoyable, which most romance is for me. Um, or on the other hand, something that's really action-packed where it's like moving quickly. Um, so yeah, I sort of want things that move when, I, when I'm sitting on a beach, so like an action-packed thriller or a mystery or something like that. Um, and then Jim has another prompt that's not a prompt. Uh, B is for Beagle, um, a chance to see his Beagle Abbey, which I guess actually I don't have an equivalent for. Not this time. 
Okay. Prompt three, B is for best. What is the best book you have read this year so far? That hurts my heart. <laughs> so um, definitely some contenders are The Count of Monte Cristo, which I did really, really enjoy, although I also had some rants about it. And um, I did post a video about that that um, you can go check out if you're interested. Um, also a YA uh, sort of romance novel, The Stars and the Blackness between them um, by Junata Petras I really enjoyed. Um, it's a very queer, very spiritual sort of coming of age romance story, um, very much older teenage, so I think um, other adults like me that appreciate YA would definitely identify with it, so that was really enjoyable. Um, Drew Lanham's book that I mentioned in the A tag, that was a really excellent memoir I felt like, um, so that is also sort of in the running for my best books. Um, so they're just some options off the top of my head. Um, prompt number four, B is for bookshop or bookstore. Do you have a favorite bookstore? Um, yeah, that's, I've never really lived in one place long enough as an adult to really develop a favorite bookstore. So I have many that I've been to, but, and, and enjoyed. Um, the one that sort of I feel an emotional connection to is called Masolit, and it's a bookstore in Krakow, Poland. Um, and I did study abroad there, so I lived in Krakow for six months, and um, my fellow study abroad mates and I, you know, it's like you're living in another country for six months, you're not going to spend any time in your dorm room. And so whenever we had time between classes, which we skipped some classes because we were in another country. Uh, so yeah, we, we would just spend like big chunks of our days kind of moving around between cafes and bookstores and things, um, you know, sort of just enjoying the culture. Um, so Mass Elite was a little bit special just because it was um, English language, uh, which there wasn't a lot of um, in Krakow. And so we, we actually didn't spend a ton of time there. We tended to frequent the cafes more, but it was still just like a great place to go for an afternoon. You could do your schoolwork. Um, they sold some baked goods and coffee and you could browse the English language books, um, which was a nice uh, taste of home. And it was just very cozy. <laughs> it's like in older buildings, everything was wood paneled and um, just a very comfortable place to be. So Masolit in, uh, in Poland. Um, okay, prompt number five. B is for banned books. Is there any book you think should be banned? And um, Jim linked to a YouTube video from Ash at Bookish Realm, um, who posted a video about the most challenged and banned books of the past decade on the American Library Association banned and canceled list. Um, so if you're really interested in sort of the more like formal take on that, you can go look at that. Um, I don't really think books uh, should be banned. Um, I think books are, you know, sort of here to challenge us. Um, I think they're a very useful mode of communication. I think the more that you tell people that they shouldn't speak and uh, take away their ways of speaking, the more entrenched they can be, thinking about sort of the negative side of things and then the positive side of things of, um, you know, we all have sort of our inner things going on. It can be really hard to talk about or to find people with similar experiences and books can really open that. So in particular, I'm thinking about a lot of queer lit that's been banned um, and the harm that I think that's done to especially kids and youth, but really to everybody. Um, so no, I don't think books should be banned. I wish that as a society we were more literate and would talk about books more and really sort of normalize that and make that, I don't want to say it's not mainstream to talk about books, but like, <laughs> I wish I wish we talked about them a lot more. And I wish uh, high schools and, and, you know, schooling that like, um, you know, we think of books as just a thing for English class, but like, there are books on every topic, you know, we should be reading books in like, every class. I mean, even like math class, there are amazing books about math that aren't just like textbooks do your problems, right? So like there are books for everything. And so we should just sort of normalize that more and make it more of a universal thing, partly because it's such a good way to talk about really tough topics and learn about them and expose yourself to them. And you don't have to agree with every book that's ever been published. Like goodness knows, I'm, I certainly don't. There are a lot of books that I really would never read and would probably be very offended if I ever did read them. But that doesn't mean that other people shouldn't have that opportunity, whether those horrible books reflect what they're thinking, which I hope not. Um, but also just, yeah, again, it's like a learning experience. You know, if we, if we sort of put, a lid 
on ugly things, you know, it's like the history, like history repeats itself if you don't study it, right? And so, you know, I, I sort of think that's true of a lot of horrible things, that the more you drive it sort of underground and stigmatize it, um, the worse it can be when it does sort of spill out. Um, you know, and I think we're actually seeing that with um, race in America, for an example, in the 21st century. Um, anyway, a bit of babbling there. Uh, prompt number six, B is for Bible. What is your favorite book of the Bible? And what trigger warnings do you think it should have? So I know very, very little about the Bible. Um, I was brought up in a very liberal Hicksite Quaker meeting on the East Coast of the US. And so even though that is a faith community, um, Bible teaching was not a part of the religious education for kids. It was much more about like social justice, which was great growing up. Um, but uh, I do want to read the Bible, actually, um, someday, and I own many copies of it, actually. Um, so I'll get there. Uh, but yeah, I don't have a favorite book of the Bible. I could only name a couple of them. Um, it's something that stymies me in crossword puzzles all the time, because I don't know the books of the Bible. Uh, I, th pr I think probably the Psalms would be the most interesting to me, because they would probably be the ones that I could connect to the most, because it's poetry, and some of it seems just quite nice and innocuous and not particularly religious. Um, so yeah. Prompt number seven, B is for bookshelf. Show me your bookshelf or bookshelves. So I have a little clip that I will insert at the end of the tag video um, showing some bookshelves. All right, and finally, prompt number eight, B is for Brazil. Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist has been translated into 70 languages. Have you read any Paulo Coelho? And if so, what did you think of his book? So I have only read The Alchemist, which I read for assigned reading in ninth grade, which would have made me 14 years old um, for English class. And I remember loving it. And ever since then, essentially, it's been on my radar as like, this would be a book to reread at some point, and I just haven't done it. Um, and I only recently, within the past couple of years, became aware that he's written many other books. Um, and I was just having an exchange with Jim in, in the comments of one of his videos, actually, about like, which of those would be good to read. Um, so uh, hopefully there will be a Paolo Coelho reread and then some new reads in my future. Um, okay, so then I need to tag people. So I am going to tag... Liz at for booking out loud. Um, if we ignore the preposition for her channel starts with B. So Liz, I'm tagging you in the B tag. And then I also want to tag a new channel, Ryan at book time with Ryan. Um, he has under 30 subscribers as of earlier today when I was watching some of his videos. Um, so he's really new to booktube. Um, but uh, he's, uh, he's, in his late 30s, um, reads a lot of, I think, nonfiction with an economic and finance um, bent, and uh, just has sort of a new perspective and a different suite of books to offer to booktube. So I'm excited to see more from Ryan. So I hope you too are interested in this tag and uh, consider doing it. All right, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.